Hey everyone, welcome to some Unity Basics here. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about project settings and build settings and some other just kind of general Unity things you should know about. So um, I just have a regular scene here. It doesn't really matter what my scene is right now. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of the menus you have up here. Number one, if you go to File and Build Settings, um, this one here will let you kind of different determine what builds you would like to make for your game if, um, if you ever need this. So Windows, you know, Mac, Linux, iOS, Web Player, all that kind of stuff. And in here is your scenes in your build. This is what you actually want to include in these things. So if I have an open scene, I could click that and then do, you know, it'll add my test scene in here. But I could also, if I have, you know, test 01, I can drag that in there and it'll include all of these. So if you're ever doing any uh, scripting for level load, any of that kind of stuff, um, you're using these indexes or names, uh, these levels need to be included into this build settings in order for you to actually build them over. Um, next, we'll take a look at uh, edit project settings. There's a few things you can uh, you should know about all these uh, or some of these things here. Uh, input, this is where you name and do all your inputs for your games in case uh, you need to add new ones like uh, you're adding a new mechanic to your game, you want to do, uh, you know, um, shoot unicorn fire out of your butt you can make a unicorn button you know, right name it whatever you want and then through code you can just call the actual name of the button that one's pretty simple um, tags and layers so this is where you can add new tags and layers to your game uh, tags are these little guys on an object and layers are over here tags we use for finding um, specific objects through code like players enemies whatever you want so if you want uh, an enemy to enter uh, a trigger volume, then um, you say, you know, when something enters a trigger volume, if it's tagged as enemy, then you can do something. Otherwise, don't do anything. So tags are nice that way. Uh, layers are really good for uh, a couple things. One, you can use them for rendering, lighting, all that kind of stuff. You can use them for code and physics and all that. Um, but also just as a nice thing, if I take all my meshes and I set my layer, if I add a layer here, to you know, floors and then I go here and I name this one floor um, in my layers kind of pull out here on the editor I could just turn off floors and then if I just don't want to look at something I don't have to so uh, we do this in our games for things like uh, really far background assets or foreground assets that kind of interfere with the camera um, nice for game time kind of crappy for editor editing kind of time so we set them on layers and then we could hide stuff um, and that way it doesn't get in the way, which is super sweet. Next, if we go to project settings, uh, we have audio and all that. You have time as well. So uh, this is your time scale. This is how fast your game will actually run. So, you know, if you want to slow things down, you can change this to 0.5, right? If you want to speed things up, you can set this to 2. Um, so you can always mess around with that through code if you need to. And your fixed time step, this one's important if you're doing um, any physics-based assets and um, um, you kind of want to improve the quality of your game. <laughs> um, this is how often Unity will check physics. Um, so if you want this to be a lot faster, you can set this to 0.1, or if you really want to be crazy, you can set it to like 0 0.001. Um, the lower you set this number, the more often Unity is going to have to check for physics updates, which means it will run slower. Um, but your physics will look way cooler, um, and they'll they'll act differently and stuff too. But uh, if you're working on a really physics heavy game, a really good thing to mess around with, make sure that that's all working the way you want it. Um, so the ones I really want to talk to you guys about is player. Um, this is kind of where you set up the actual, oops, this is actually where you set up your um, stuff for the actual game when you make the build. So if you open this up, number one, you have your resolution and presentation. You can say whether the default is full screen for the player, whether they should use their native um, resolution. Um, the run and background things, if you want it just to kind of keep going, if they're not focusing on the game, um, you know, kind of different libraries and things to use. You can even select aspect ratios if you don't want to do, you know, four by three, just don't let people even do that. So when they have that little pull down list of all the uh, things they could do, they won't even have all these options. Just do 16 by nine and that's it. Um, you know, so you could do that. You could also turn this thing off. So if you want, um, uh, display resolution dialog you could just do you know hidden by default or just disable it completely if you want to do it in game or you don't want people to have a choice over things um, icon here you can um, you can select all the different icons that you put in for different sizes 
Uh, by default, it will make these icons for you based on what you put in here. So if I put in, um, you know, this one here, it will make all these icons for me, but I could always override them and do individual ones if I really wanted to. Not really, you know, that important. Um, up here, you could set your company name and your project name, right? So, you know, that way at least it looks a little fancier and you can set your stuff on there. Um, so we have our icons, we have a splash screen if you want to do like a, a, a you know, like an actual banner when it comes up um, and all that. So this is for your standalone. There's also web player settings if you want here, but mostly we we'll use next web player kind of bytes. Anyways, this is the important one. This is the other settings one here. So your most important settings are these two here, which is your rendering path and your color space. So by default, Unity does forward and gamma. You can change it to deferred. Now what deferred will do is, uh, it's just a different method of rendering your scene. Um, in forward rendering, we get to do a lot of nice things like anti-aliasing and all that fun stuff. Um, but it's a little bit more expensive on lighting. Lighting, um, you need to count every object per light. So if you have one object and they have five lights touching it, you're gonna have to render that object five different times or compute it at least. Um, under deferred, we can't do things like anti-aliasing because we don't have access to certain parts of the render buffer, um, but we can um, do a lot more lighting, right? We can do a ton of dynamic lights and it only counts basically per object and that's it. So this one's a lot nicer for really dynamic heavy scenes. Um, all depends, they'll look different too. Same with linear, linear will, will just render uh, or calculate lighting a lot differently. So depending on which one kind of works best for you, you can play around with that. Um, you can select your um, APIs and things like that and all that, but I don't really mess around with that too much. Um, your next important ones here are your static and dynamic batching. Now they're, they're on by default and I don't recommend you change them, but I wanted to talk a little bit about this and what these actually mean. So if I have objects in my scene, I have this cube and this cube has material on it called walls. If I have this cube a whole bunch of times and um, I need to render this in my camera, well, by default, it's gonna have to check all these objects and then render them all individually, make sure they're all fine. But if they're sharing the same material and they're set to static up here, the game engine can just go, gotcha, four cubes, render them. Um, because it doesn't have to worry about different materials, about what the materials are doing. It knows that these are all the same types of objects and can just do them all in one pass. <coughs> so the nice thing about um, having the dynamic and static batching is it'll save you a lot on uh, object performance. And one of the things that Unity and just generally game engines are bad for is object count. So if you have a million tiny little objects and they're all using different materials, your game's gonna run really slow. So, you know, the least amount of materials you can have on a given object, uh, the better. So, you know, sometimes you can have where you, you know, an object where you assign multiple materials to different faces and things like that. Um, well, that kind of sucks for the engine because then it has to take a, you know, so you had a 5,000 polygon mesh with three different materials on it. Well, it's gonna have to take that 5,000 polygon mesh and render it every single time for each of those different materials. If you have it all in one material and it sets a static, well, it's gonna do a much better job at, uh, at kind of getting that done. Uh, dynamic batching will try and do the same thing. If it's not set to static, it's not as efficient, um, but obviously some things you just can't have as static because the second you do this, you can't animate them, remove them because they, they won't do it. Um, but be wary um, and be cautious. Put static on as on many objects as you can um, and it'll, it'll, it should save you some, some performance headaches, which is really nice. Um, so where were we? We were doing that. Um, you could preload assets and do some other stuff too. Don't worry about that um, too, too much if you're just making a small game. Um, I just kind of want to talk about those big, big points there. Uh, next we have, uh, you know, we have to have things like physics. Um, so you could set the gravity of your game, um, you know, your default material that goes on, on uh, physics stuff, um, bounce thresholds, all this fancy stuff here. Uh, now this part's really important. You see here it says floors. This is the layers that I added. Um, and I added this new one, so it added this, this little matrix here. Um, what this is really useful for is if I have two objects and I have one that's tagged as player, one that's tagged as whatever, or on different layers, and these things are flying around doing stuff, and I, I need physics on both of these. I need to find out when they're colliding with certain objects, but I never want these two things to touch in physics. I don't want them to be triggering each other, pushing each other and all that. 
Um, what I can do is if they're all on separate layers and I never want um, you know, my floors layer and my UI layer to touch, I can just turn that off. And these two layers will never interact with each other and collide, which is really awesome. It's a really nice, clean way of, of optimizing some of that stuff. So keep that in mind if you're doing anything uh, really complex and, um, and you need to set stuff up. So uh, next we have, uh, well, we have Physics 2D, but same, same kind of deal, Quality. Now, Quality, you have a whole bunch of quality levels. These are the ones that will show up for the player on that little dialogue in the beginning. And you can click through these. You can do as many as you want and set them all up. But really, what you're going to want to do is just kind of understand what some of these do. So pixel light count, let's take a look at what this does here. Let's take our, uh, I'm just going to lock this panel down so it doesn't change. Let's go uh, game object, let's add some point light, oh, not spotlight. <coughs> point light, let's add some point lights in here. All right, so. Second here, let me just uh... all right. So we have a, a bunch of lights in this scene, touching all these objects. We have a directional light, and we have four of these little lights here. You'll see these cubes are all getting all the different colors from all the different directions. Let's throw another one back here, just for good measure. Make this one purpley pink. All right, there we go. So by default, my Fantastic is set up to do four pixel accounts. Now if I set that down to one, I'm not quite sure why that didn't actually work, but what it's supposed to do, um, oh, unless I'm still undeferred. Oh, I was. So undeferred, um, it doesn't matter. That pixel light count does not matter at all because I can have as many objects touching or as many lights touching an object as I want. So I switch this back to forward, and this is where forward kind of comes in uh, into play here. So if I have this set to eight, you'll see all my lights are touching these objects, and it's fine. I'm getting colors from all of them. Looks great. But that's really heavy, especially if it's set to 78. Now, if I want to control this and I only want to say two, well, it's going to pick the two lights that are kind of affecting this thing the most. So it'll be the directional light and this yellow light, uh, for some reason, might be closer, right? It might be uh, stronger, whatever it is. There you go, now it's the pink one. Um, so it'll kind of snap between how many lights I can have in my scene. So this is a, a really good way of controlling you know, performance and stuff like that if you're using uh, forward rendering. Um, you know, so uh, just kind of so you know, um, you'll see with these obviously fast lights, you have zero, you're back to like crappy lighting. Um, next you have texture quality, you could set, you know, uh, you just compress your texture quality if it's running really slow. Uh, you have uh, anisotropic textures if you want to you know, make them nice and crisp, so you can disable, you know, that's on all of them or whatever. Anti-aliasing, you can do up to eight and that'll clean up all your jaggedy lines there. See how nice and crisp that's doing? If I disable it, I start getting jaggedy lines. This uh, does not work on deferred uh, uh, lighting, so that's kind of the downside of deferred. Um, you also have soft particles. So soft particles are sweet when they intersect with objects. Um, they will be nice and uh, soft. So it's not just particles, it's all transparency. So if I have this one and I uh, set this to transparent, it did it for all objects. I guess I was wrong. I guess for additive, it has to be certain types of shaders. There you go. So you'll see here I have this object and it's intersecting um, these planes. You can see how nice and soft it is. If I turn that off, it'll do a hard, hard intersect. And it'll still do, you know, transparencies and, and things like that. Um, but it won't be all nice and soft, which really sucks. So soft particles are the shit. So keep that on if you can. Um, but just so you know what that does. Uh, shadows are, you know, you can limit to just be hard shadows or you can disable shadows. Hard shadows will be these like crispy ones, soft ones it'll try and do. 
um, softer ones. You could determine how, you know, what resolution your overall shadows will be in your scene. You can override all this stuff on a per light basis, so I can still go into my directional light and change, uh, change this from soft to hard. Uh, and then, you know, I can use low resolution or change my resolution. I could do, I could override all this stuff if I wanted to, uh, but this is kind of, you know, project wide. So very high. You'll see now it's not doing anything because I changed it on my other light. So I go back and change that up. Very high resolution. You could also do shadow distance. And what this will do is determine, um, you know, how far away will your shadows start disappearing from the camera. So if I do this really high, I'm gonna have to get pretty far away. This uh, is gonna get really hard to start testing. You'll see here. Watch those shadows on those boxes. So I could determine when shadows start getting calculated. So really good for really big scenes and things like that. Um, and you do you know determine how many cascades, how uh, how crisp. So it'll try and do like really high shadows close to the camera and, and low ones off further far away. Uh, this is the bones thing I talked about. So this is where you can set your project-wide bones um, scale. Um, this is your V-Sync. So uh, you can do every V-Blank, which will um, do like a nice crisp V-Sync um, and make sure you don't get any screen tearing and all that stuff. You could do every second V-Blank, which is, you know, okay, but not as nice. And then you do don't sync, which uh, won't do that at all, which you get screen tearing. Uh, basically what this does is sometimes your game will run at uh, 60 frames a second. Sometimes it'll run at 30. Sometimes it'll run at 200. Um, and this is when V-Sync really comes in handy. So instead of trying to force down 200 frames a second, which is really hard to do, um, every V-Blank will force it down to 60 frames a second. It'll just clamp it down to that. So then you won't get any crazy ass um, frames trying to jump on here and, and look really silly. Every other V-Blank will limit your build to 30 frames a second, which again is still nice, but um, obviously not as nice as 60. So use those as you want. Uh, don't sync won't limit your build to anything. So if you want it running at 200 frames a second, you can, but you might get some really weird looking stuff in there too. Um, and then you play around with your particle budget and LOD bias and stuff, but you don't really have to worry about that too, too much unless you're making something really, really crazy. Um, so that's your quality, uh, your graphics. Oop, let me just uh, get out of there. You could do what built-in shaders are being used, um, you know, light map nodes, what shaders come with there. It, it gets pretty bananas. I wouldn't really too worry about too much about that. Networking, if you're doing any networking stuff. Editor, if you're doing, um, you, know, you can select how you compress your stuff. If you're, um, if you have a device connected and you want to use it, like an iPad for testing, um, you can do like a downsize resolution for some reason. Um, this is for file control and, and other stuff. If you want your projects to start in 2D automatically. Um, whatever so you can have all this in here um, if you want to play around with it but anyways that's kind of the the basics of of the project settings hopefully that kind of gets you guys to at least uh, be able to control your builds um, you know here and there and all that stuff so uh, thanks a lot